I hope you all had a great long Labor Day weekend, but it's time to find out what's been happening in the world of tabletop gaming. So, let's see what's going on for the week of September 4th, 2023. Last news roundup, I talked about a theft that occurred at Gen Con. This theft involved Magic the Gathering cards and supposedly over $300,000 worth of products were stolen right off the showroom floor. That said, this is a large convention center as well as attached to many hotels, and there are many cameras. With this footage, the Indianapolis Police Force had two suspects they wished to talk to, Thomas Dunbar and Andrew Pearson. Now, one of the reasons is obviously just they looked very similar to the people taking the stuff. It's pretty clear the footage, but one of the bigger connections is the fact that one of the suspects stealing the product is wearing a shirt that looks almost identical to the game they helped design, Castle Assault, which obviously seems much more likely it's these two people rather than two look likes, considering who else would wear a shirt with their game design on the back. Now, there is an update to this story. First, it seems their attorneys have been contacted and the case is moving forward meaning that it seems that the police are much more confident that these two people were involved in the theft. Second, it seems the product has been found. Now, we don't know where or if it is fully found. It sounds like most of it is. This is cards after all, so maybe a few packs are missing. But what we do know is it was found with the help of New York Police Force, which means that it was probably found in the state of New York. A happy update for the store to be able to get, I hope, most of their product back. It sounds like it was all of it, but once again, this isn't like finding a stolen car. This is a lot of boxes of magic, and I don't know how well, you know, they've counted all that stuff and make sure it's all there. I'm sure we may hear more about that a little bit later. But regardless, it is nice to see the games returned. Granted, it would have been nice to have that during the actual convention. I think they still were able to pull off the tournaments they're going for, but, you know, it's usually nice to have the stuff around. Just a reminder, as of now, they are still suspects. To my knowledge, neither the designers nor another person have admitted fault and guilt to the theft, nor has a case been held where a judge has sentenced someone as guilty for the robbery. That all said, it still looks like it's heavily pointing in their direction and hasn't stopped people from review bombing Castle Assault. Right now, there are a lot of negative reviews, as well as some people trying to put a more positive twist to usually say that like the publisher shouldn't be punished because of what some of the designers did. Either way, it's nice to see this product return, and hopefully next year's Gen Con, people won't be able to walk in even not wearing masks and take out whatever product they see lying around on the show floor. I was lucky enough to talk with Paizo about their upcoming changes and updates to both their Pathfinder and Starfield systems. You can go watch my live streams where I talk about that. However, if you want something new right now, they've released two new subclasses that are in the playtesting phase that you can try out. The first one is the Animist. This one seems to be making deals with spirits. And from what I can tell you, actually will change. It's not like a warlock, which has their usual one patron. The description says each day could be different. So I don't know if there's like a long rest or 24 hour time before you can switch a deal with a spirit. They talk about different kinds, maybe ones that let you possess them to help enact on the real world. Some of them are ancient spirits of different elements. Either way, it seems to be a very interesting class for someone who wants to have a shuffled up experience, maybe powers that are going to be not always the same, someone who maybe likes to change gears a lot a bit more in video games. This might be one that catches your attention. It is a wisdom based class, by the way, stat wise. So if you want someone who's willing to make deals with different spirits and maybe really like the idea of having your powers not always be the same, it's one to try out. The other one is the Exemplar. The Exemplar is going to be part of a new rare class system. I think these are just going to be more unique and weirder classes. It's going to be charisma based, and apparently its powers are going to be unlocked or locked through moving Ekens, I believe was the word they used, through a divinity system. It sounds a little bit like changing what abilities you have equipped on your like RPG character. So maybe you have technically access to a lot of bigger spells or attacks, but you only have five Ekans to choose out of that entire list. So it, the idea is it seems like you can shift and chain to re-equip for whatever story or kind of character you're going for. It seems though, thematically speaking, the Exemplar is supposed to make you relive the idea of the demi-hero from old myths, you know, your Hercules, where you're destined for greatness, be it from your lineage, maybe from gods or whatever fate has weaved for you. The fantasy, that power fantasy of being 
already designed for a huge and powerful future, be it for good or for evil. So I'm curious to see how that will shape up. Does that mean these rare subclasses are almost designed to be stronger than regulars? Will a level 5 exemplar be better than a level 5 rogue? We'll have to see. You can try it out right now. This player testing will be open until the start of October, and that's probably when they'll take it down and do that final bit of, you know, making sure everything works out and realizing, I mean, I'd be shocked if there's not one or two abilities or spells that are just too powerful. And then hopefully we'll be able to see these in a more official format later on in a new Pathfinder book. A while ago, I talked about some big drama in the world of chess where player Hans Niemann was suing Chess.com, Magnus Carlsen, and Hikaru Nakamura for over $100 million. This all revolved around some allegations that Hans was cheating in some chess tournaments and, of course, led to him being expunged from certain places and, and according to him, losing a lot of sponsorship and teaching offers, which is why the $100 million price tag was added. Well, it seems that all parties have come to an agreement and settled outside of court. What we do know is that Hans Niemann will be allowed once again on chess.com and that each party will be allowed to say their own opinions. Now, they haven't said too much. Basically, Hans Niemann and Magnus Carlsen want to return to playing chess rather than playing against each other in the courtroom, with Carlsen saying there was no definitive evidence of Niemann cheating. Nakamura, who is more a part of this because of his reporting and making this apparently very public, has stated that he is planning to continue to discuss not only cheating in chess, but apparently has some ideas or maybe even uh, stories, it, a little bit vague here, of other grandmasters who may have been a little bit more dubious in their games. Regardless, it does seem that everyone is satisfied i don't know happy is the right word right now we don't know because it's a set out of court to my knowledge we can't find out those details unless they actually tell us what they did but it does seem that both of these master players will be able to return to chess possibly facing each other again in future tournaments Lorcan is now officially out everywhere which means you can now pick it up wherever you want be it your friendly local game store big box stores online like amazon or even any of the disney parks that all said just because they're available there doesn't mean you're going to find it. For a lot of people I've heard, they sort of just show up and see an empty card shelf. And that's no big surprise considering all the hype that's been around the game. But luckily, they have announced something that I was really hoping to hear from Ravensburger. And that is that they're going to do a big reprint of the first wave in order to make sure that there's more of this product available. Because of this hype and demand, a lot of it is being sold way above the suggested retail price, what you should expect to pay. And that is, at least in my opinion, not a very good thing, especially for the start of a game. So they are going to make another reprint of all this first set products, though it will be released after the second set, which is going to be released in November. So I don't know if November's Wave 2, uh, the Chapter 2, is going to have the same amount, in which case then that's going to also need to reprint, or if they're able to just wave two to be a much larger amount as well. So when that hits, we'll still be able to buy a lot of those cards and not feel bad about it. And then when wave one returns again, you'll be able to then get any of those cards at a much more affordable price. Either way, the fact that they're doing a reprint definitely means that it's doing well for them. And if you are a fan, well, you're going to be able to get new stuff. And if you weren't able to buy anything, once again, patience will be a virtue and you should be able to hopefully pick up anything you missed out on at a much more fair price. And finally, some bad news. Game designer Tailwind Woodruff has passed away. She has worked on tons of projects from Magic the Gathering to many favorites Betrayal House on the Hill. So there is a good chance that you have played or seen something that she's been involved in. So our condolences to all of her family. And thank you for all the help you've done when it comes to shaping what we see on the tabletop. Now on to game announcements. First, if you really like that whole story and drama in the world of chess, well, I've got a new game that might be right up your alley. Capstone Games has announced Match of the Century, a game which takes place in 1972 during the Chess World Championship between America and the Soviet Union. That's right, we've got some Cold War chess here. You'll be playing through multiple matches of chess but you're not actually going to be playing chess you're going to be playing different cards so these matches will be much quicker and play just a little bit different than maybe the chess you know deadpool is now making his entrance into marvel champions so if you've been waiting to play with the merc with a mouth 
Now's a chance you can grab his deck and add them to your game. For the Lord of the Rings RPG fans, we've got a new expansion book for the Free League Publishing RPG series, this one titled Morio Through the Doors of Durin, which lets you dive into the dark, dark depths of Kazakh Doom. But if you were a fan of the Lord of the Rings card game, which apparently many people were, you are going to be able to now pick up some tins of the Lord of the Rings characters from, it seems, Walmart, as well as I think it was Major. I don't know if it's just exclusive to those two, but those are the only two listed. So this is a little bit weird, at least for me and Magic, because I can't remember when they've done tins before. Tins have been in other card games. And they will come with two promo cards, one of Lathril Blade of Elves, as well as one of Llanowar Elves. Like I said, these do appear in plenty of other products. In particular, I believe in Pokemon. I don't know as much Yu-Gi-Oh, but I've heard that this is one of the ways they help get some of those more desirable cards out there and more people can play with them. I'm curious to see if the same will be said when it comes to Magic the Gathering. And finally, for those who are interested in the newer trading card game, Flesh and Blood, there's a cool new product to come out, which might seem, at least to me, a great place to start. It's known as Flesh and Blood Round the Table, and this is actually designed for people to jump straight in with four different Blitz decks, which I believe the Blitz mode is what they call their multiplayer format. I don't know if that's just also what they do for head to head. Once again, I haven't played the game yet, but it was all made in collaboration with the YouTube channel Tolarian Community College, a channel that is huge on Magic the Gathering, but also Flesh and Blood, with the professor actually appearing on one of the decks. So you can check out if you're interested in Flesh and Blood, this might be a great way for you to pick up multiple decks, have it hit the table and start playing right away. But that is all the news we have this week. Let me know your thoughts on any of these stories. A lot of them are updates on previous ones. So if you thought there were any surprises or did it go exactly as you expected it would, let me know in the comments down below. And thank you so much for reaching this far. But for now, I'm Will, and see you on the next News Roundup.